All right, now we're continuing forward. So we've got our uh, sterile field established. So I'm ready to go ahead and do my soft count. So when I'm doing my soft count, again, it's not gonna be any instrumentation. So we're not using a count sheet. So we're gonna go ahead and just use a count board like you've seen or will see in clinicals. Okay, so I'm gonna ask my nurse, are you ready to count? Yes. Okay. So they're gonna go ahead and walk over to the count board. I'm gonna go ahead and again, start with my Ratex. I'm gonna pull off or rip off the seal. Okay, Ratex, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. So they're gonna go ahead and then record it on the count board. Next, I have a traumatic needle. I have one, two, three, and four is in my needle book. Four. Knife blades, I have one. One. Syringe, I have one. Hypo, I have one. One. Marking pen, I have one, two, three. Three. So I have three pieces here. Okay. Thread, I have one, two, and three. Three. So I'm counting the bottle and the cap each as one and then the sponge, so a total of three. Okay, so that is our soft count. So now I'm ready to go ahead and start setting up my mayo stand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a short mayo hager or some of you might have a cryo wood needle holder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load up my 15 blade. Some of you might be using an 11, okay? Just depending on surgeon preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my three handle I'm gonna go ahead and load this and place it on my mayo stand. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and load up my first suture. So that's gonna be in your needle book. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and place this on my working corner, just on my needle book here so it's protected, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my mayo stand with my ringed instruments. So I'm gonna to grab two Kellys to kind of extend the incision if needed, okay? And then I'm grabbing two mayo clamps to re return the specimen once we remove the, the gallbladder, okay? And then I'm grabbing two cokers for tenting the fascia once we're achieving pneumoperitoneum, okay? So again, same concept, putting the curves down, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and just grab suture scissors. This is the only scissor we need because we're not gonna use any dissection. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these over to the back edge of my mayo stand. And then I'm gonna place my suture scissors just by my, um, by my forceps here, okay? Now that I got my ringed instruments, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my laparoscopic instruments on. So the laparoscopic instruments I need are first gonna be two Davis and Gex. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a Maryland, and then I'm gonna grab just my J-hook for my cautery and then suction, okay? So we need two Davidson Gex. One is gonna be to extend kind of the gallbladder up into uh, the upper chest cavity for dissection, and then we're gonna have another Davidson Gex for the surgeon to grasp as they're dissecting. And then we have our Maryland for uh, dissecting around the cystic duct and artery, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and place these on my Mayo stand. I like to put my suction and my J-hook just on the front edge. And then I'm gonna go ahead and organize my instruments here. So again, I want the tips facing where I'm gonna stand. So I'm, remember, I'm gonna be on this edge over here. So I'm putting my two Davidson Gex towards the front and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my Maryland. And then just thinking order as well, I'm having my clip applier and then shears after that. Okay, because we're gonna do clips first and then cut. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and place two Raytex up on my sterile field. I'm gonna grab my thread and I'm gonna take this cap off. I'm gonna spray a little bit on the sponge and then I'm gonna go ahead and place that up on my mayo stand. And I can keep this bottle just here on my working corner. That way it doesn't get lost. Okay. 
Now I'm ready to go ahead and receive my meds. Okay, so it's gonna be just like what we had in um, laparotomy. So I'll take uh, I'll take my local first. I have one percent xylocaine with epinephrine, one to one hundred thousand, twenty milliliters, okay. and it expires three of twenty-seven. So same concept like before, I'm gonna go ahead and make my labels right away. Okay, so we have lidocaine this time, so 1% lidocaine with epinephrine, one to 100,000, and I have 20 milliliters. Okay, and then I'm gonna make another one for my syringe. Same thing, but it doesn't need to say 20 milliliters, just like we talked about before, okay? So 1% lidocaine with epinephrine, one to 100,000. fill up my syringe to 10 milliliters. I like to put my med cup in kind of the magnet portion too just in case it does spill a little bit. I have that there to kind of hold it in place. Okay. All right. So my lidocaine is ready. Now I'm ready to receive. I'll just take sterile water this time. So I don't need um, saline necessarily because we're not going to really do use any irrigation inside the wound unless it's through our irrigator. So uh, water will be just used to kind of clean instrumentation. All right, I've got sterile water, uh, 500 milliliters, and it expires nine of 27. And we don't have a big pitcher like we did for laparotomy, so you can just use this small basin or a big basin inside, whatever works for you, okay? So I'm just making one label. Again, we don't have an aseptic, okay? So I'm just making one label that's just gonna say just sterile water or sterile H2O, 500 milliliters. this on my basin. Okay. All right. Now I am ready to go for my surgeon.